I'm Louis Cole, and back in 2015, I bought an amazing converted school bus from a guy in Mexico called Pablo. He had won it in a raffle from a German couple, Felix and Mowgli, who had made a documentary called Expedition Happiness of them converting it and driving it down from Alaska to Mexico. I flew down to Mexico with three friends, and we had an epic road trip back up to California, where the bus lived for a couple of years with my friend Cam on the streets of Venice. During that time, I took it on a few fun road trips, but never got to live in it full time. It was then parked up for a few years, and after a failed attempt at making some money as an Airbnb, I decided to rescue the bus, and me and my fiance Raya decided to take it on the road and move into it full time. I did some upgrades to the bus, including building a huge custom roof rack, and then we loaded up everything we owned and hit the road. We traveled the US for a year and then drove it all the way down through Central America to Costa Rica, just in time for our wedding. And this will be its final resting place, as we parked it up on a plot of land we have in an eco village, where we're gonna build our dream house. The road trip down was quite the journey filled with unforgettable moments and challenges but we made it. So we parked it up two years ago and it's been sitting on our plot ever since. As you may have seen it in the previous couple of videos I had to rip out some of the floor due to it getting water damaged back in 2022. We then had to leave it parked up for over a year as we relocated to the UK to start our family. Sadly it was broken into during that year and over five thousand dollars of our belongings were stolen. So, finally we have returned and my goal is to assess the damage, rescue our belongings and move the bus off the road into our lot. Our next plan is to redesign the interior to accommodate for our growing family and hopefully later this year we will build an awesome house around the bus to help expand the space we have. As we gear up for the next chapter, we're excited about the possibilities that lie ahead and the chance to create new memories with our beloved school bus. After 13 months of not coming to the bus, I'm gonna have a look at what we're dealing with. It's been ransacked about a year ago, right? Yeah. It was about ransacked, a year. window smashed, stuff strewn everywhere apparently. I've only seen photos and videos that you've sent. Sears here by the way. And uh, I've got some bolt croppers as a last resort if we can't manage to break the <laughs> lock open because it's seized. Well, let's have a little look. Is oh, this, gonna, this is, is wild. This freak the camera out, isn't it, me wearing this? Oh wow, that all the numbers are turning together. Yeah, it's seized. It's super seized. Wow, okay. Oh, the numbers are turning. This bus has been sitting here for so long, but for some reason of luck, there is a plant that's still alive on the roof. I have no idea how it survived. Has not been watered, just survived with rainy season. Do you know what's great is that door hasn't got open, so. Well, I jammed a chair in front of it. So, any, so you couldn't, you couldn't. Any rain or humidity coming through here won't have necessarily gone into the main bus. Correct, and, and a person couldn't get through either. I'm really hopeful. Maybe we should just bulk up it. I'd say it's seized, you can just buy a new one. I actually have never bulk up something before. This looks like a reinforced padlock, this doesn't look like an easy one to bulk up. They're gonna go and put, oh, there we go. Wow, sick. <sighs> Moment of truth, baby. Okay. So last I saw there saw was a little like, spider run through there. there was, yeah, there was some plants there. There was wasn't plants there. growing. Yeah. This isn't too bad though, that's just kind of the carpet. Little cobwebs. Oh bro, it isn't too bad. It really isn't too bad. It smells a little humid. It needs to be aired out. Yeah, but it like, needs to be aired out, but it's not like, it's not like, um, the forest is completely overgrown. Is this dead flies? I don't know what this is. I can't see any like rodent poo. Mm. This is all um this is all the new flooring. Yeah, so many spiders. It's just tons of cobwebs. I was just mainly hoping there wasn't like huge ro like huge mammals that had moved in. Yeah. But if it's just <laughs> a few ants nests and stuff. This has gone pretty mouldy on this in here. Oh there, nice. That's where you wedged it. Brilliant. Yeah. So oh, no one could where... open the bathroom door. Oh, this is this is great. I mean, the mattress even looks alright. Like... There's spiders absolutely everywhere. But... Yeah, look at this spider. But look at this. These books are fine. This is a good test of like how good the bus is. Honestly, Briar is going to be ecstatic. Our airstream was parked here for a whole rainy season and a half, essentially. It's older than this bus and not as sealed as well as this bus and it was in 
it was in pretty rough shape. We had to cut out some wood that got moldy, but this, this looks better than, than our setup. It needs to be aired out for sure, and every single thing needs to be washed and wiped, but not much needs to get tossed. It's really dry. Yeah, it's dry in here. I don't think this, oh, is it, even the clothing hanging up. Check this out. Not a single tiny bit. Okay, there's a little bit mold here on this bag. We've got a ton of stuff here that I just totally forgotten about. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Still tuned, no. pretty much, pretty much. Oh, I definitely need to get new strings, but that is, that's all right. I don't, I was worried it might have warped in the damp, but yeah, I don't think it got too damp in it. It looks like a lot of these electrics have just been cleaned out. This was full of cameras. In there. We weirdly enough, what I found molded the worst was silicone. Really? Like anything that was silicone. Like so here, stuff yeah, that we like baked this. with, yeah, like that. That is weird. Oh, well, the Super 73 chargers are still here, but yeah, they nixed two of the batteries. I think airing it all out, sweeping it all through, hoover, get all the cobwebs, all the dust. You could just open up a few windows and just let like a, a light breeze kind of is it, go um, through it. It's not gonna rain, is it? No. Definitely not raining. So I may as well like I, pop the roof, do everything. I can't imagine it raining right now. It did actually rain a few days ago, but that was like a rare occurrence. Um, do you want to come up on the roof with me? And we'll sure. Check. So if you're watching this and you're worried about, is Costa Rica a safe place? Yes, Costa Rica is a very safe country. They don't even have a military, but petty theft happens. You don't have to worry about people harming you, but you know, they want like tools and things that they can sell and make some money. Oh, what? The bike batteries are up here. On the roof. Do you think they carried them up here? And then, or did you leave them here? I did not leave them out in the rain. <gasps> They're still showing charge. Do you know how Both? big this is? These are worth like $600 each, Holy if not more. Oh my goodness. But it looks like they've been out in the sun for like months. Oh, oh that's been bad. open. This is all my electronics, Ooh. and it's just been left open. But is it full of water? I mean, no, it's completely dry. Like even down below, it's not. No, that's weird. But I mean, when did it last rain? Maybe it's just all evaporated. Yep. This is amazing news that I've got these. This is unbelievable news. That's that's all my that's all my Super 73 batteries. Yeah, that's amazing. I only had three of them. Yeah, that's great. I bet in the next three months that you're here. Mm -hmm you can get a shelter, like a storage unit built on your land. Because there's no power in here because the solar stopped working, I'm gonna, I can't really do much in here today. I need to like have the fan going, and crack all the windows, but tomorrow I'll come back and, um, and do a good clean in here. All the cobwebs. Have you got like a full size vacuum cleaner? Yeah, we have a shop back. Oh, I might need to, can I borrow that? Yeah. These are the bus batteries. They're pretty essential for uh, moving the bus when, when that happens sometime soon. So I'm gonna charge them up. Lovely. Okay, I've arrived at a land. I'm gonna clear back a lot of this kind of shrubbery and brush that's kind of grown up where we wanna park the bus. I'm gonna cut it back with my new strimmer. And uh, I've waited till a little bit later in the day because the sun's dipped behind the mountain and uh, I'm not gonna get cooked alive out here. There's a slight risk of snakes. Snakes would be able to bite through my trousers, but uh, there's a little bit of defense there. And I'm hoping I can make enough noise that they can just go elsewhere and explore that way. Eye protection. This is my new bad boy strimmer. Pretty good. I think I'm doing a good job. I really can't see much. I'm sweating so much inside there. Right. I actually need to go and tighten the handle. I've got some Allen keys in the car. I think I'm making pretty good progress, check this out. Cleared, big chunk of this, and then 
cleared all of that out there, all the way to the car over there. Well, I've done maybe 40 minutes and made a good dent. I'm gonna call it for tonight, it's getting dark. I love this guy. This dual battery, 20 volt dual battery electric strimmer is a beast. Honestly, if I was in like in a zombie apocalypse situation, this would be a pretty good weapon. It just shreds anything in its path. I just had a message from the design committee that had been asking me about moving the bus for the last year. And uh, they're just chasing me up and saying like, you know, you're back now. Like, when are you actually moving the bus? So anyway, I've told them I'm gonna move it tomorrow. I was gonna wait a few more days for my dad to get here, but I think I can move it now. I cleared this whole area of land the other day, strimming it. And um, yeah, I think I can just drive straight onto it. I just kind of want to find the flattest area, but I think I think this is going to work. Oh, I might need to like dig up one of these plants or something. I'm just going to drive my car in here to kind of test out where the bus is going to go. I'm a little worried because I can't seem to find a completely flat area down here. Maybe here. Maybe it's just here at the entrance. If that tree is vertical, you really see the cars slanted here. This isn't completely accurate, but I've got the level of my, of my iPhone here. So, yeah, it looks like I'm about four degrees slanted down. What if I reverse up a bit? Mm, minus four. I think what we need to do now is just test I can get the bus started because um, I charged the batteries but I haven't wired them up. So I'm gonna wire up the batteries now and start up the bus. I need to remember how these are wired up now. Okay, I think I figured it out. I was certain I'd taken a photo of how it was wired in but I just looked online and it said school buses are typically 12 volt systems, not 24. That's what I was trying to figure out, so. I'm linking them in parallel. Okay. I just remembered something hilarious when I redid the flooring because I knew we weren't really going to drive the bus anymore other than relocating it. I took out the driver's seat completely. So, in order to drive, I'm just going to have to sit on one of our dining chairs. <laughs> that is very funny. Right, the engine hasn't turned over in two years. Uh, let me just go and get the keys. So when the bus was broken into, all of my keys were stolen. I had two big sets of keys with like, for padlocks, for these boxes outside, for the batteries for my Super 73s, and the bus ignition keys. And I panicked when I realized they'd been stolen because I was like, oh, no, now we're gonna have to like hotwire the bus, I don't know how to do it. Luckily, there was a spare set of keys in one of my little boxes. So I've got that. So let's give it a go. Go, baby. Oh, I think this is the key. Oh, yeah, nice. Okay, let's try it. Uh... Hmm, it's not good. Mm, the battery could have disconnected. I'm gonna to need to bring my multimeter up here, tighten all those battery connectors. That's weird. I wasn't gonna do this tonight, I was gonna to do it tomorrow morning, but I had to come back up and get one last box. So I thought, oh, I may as well just tighten those nuts in the battery and see if I can get the engine to turn over. I didn't even bring my camera, I'm just using my phone. But, let's just have a, let's just have a little listen, see. Because if not, I probably have to tape them down to charge them. Oh, that's good. That's a good sign. At least I know it turns over now. Tomorrow I might um, pop up and pump the little fuel injector thing, the little fuel 
pump to, to get the diesel to go into the injectors. I am going to try and get this bus started again because I spoke to this guy outside with the digger. So this afternoon, this guy with the digger, he is going to come by and clear, flatten the area of the land to park the bus on. Uh, and we decided five meters wide by 15 meters long, which means there'll be like a good meter each side of the bus to kind of walk around. So in the meantime, I need to get the bus started because it'd be really nice if once he's cleared the area, I can just drive reverse in and hopefully there's no problems. I'm gonna just pop the bonnet, the hood, and see if I can manually pump some diesel through. Those of you that remember when we initially left California in this bus, we had some problems starting it and this was this was the key, was pumping this little diesel valve. Let's give this a go, it's like... Okay. Maybe some quick start with the agent to spray into the fan. Hey, this is my friend, he's gonna spray the quick start. That's good. This is what the lock currently looks like. And then the digger is coming down here now to I guess help dig, or levo anyway. This is very exciting. As I watched the backhoe clear a path for the bus in seconds, I got very excited about the potential to reimagine the land we had here. Although it looked like a random overgrown field, I began dreaming about the way in which we could re-sculpt it. When I first came to Alegria, when it was going under a lot of construction, I was a little bit worried about kind of the destruction that these diggers were doing to the, the land and the plants and stuff. But good news is, Everything grows so quickly here. So for instance, this papaya tree here next to me, which is like 10 feet high, that's only a year old. That's grown since we were here just over a year ago from nowhere. So uh, I'm not worried about all of this growing back once we need it to. Oh, there goes the tree. <laughs> With the no time at all, the land was looking way more inviting to park the bus up on. My initial worry had been that the bus might get overgrown being parked off the road, but as the grass and plants were pushed aside, it gave me peace of mind. Also, clearing this space excited me for the future food forests we want to plant here and all the abundant fruit and veggies we will reap the rest of our lives. He's just leveling this area now. He's cleared it all out. It's quite impressive. I was actually kind of sitting there mesmerized by the, the digger or the, the backhoe or whatever it's called. The guy in the digger is still hard at work getting the land leveled. In the meantime, I'm gonna just get the bus ready to move. So there's a bunch of stuff I stored underneath, just like some sheets of wood, the bike rack, compost toilet. So I'm gonna shift all that out of the way. Yeah, and then I can drive hopefully in the next hour or two. Oh, ants nest alert, check this out. I just moved this one bit of wood. Oh my goodness, and it's like, Crazy ants. Oh, these are crazy, crazy ants. The bottom of the bus is clear. So, once I start, I'm gonna drive out onto this road and then get it level and then reverse all the way up here, around this corner, and then back into the level land. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
it is time. We've got about an hour of light left. If everything goes to plan, the bus should be in position. The land is level and yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. It was all feeling so real now. After a year of worrying about the bus and whether I was even gonna be able to start the engine, let alone drive it, I was finally sitting there, moving it off the road and onto our land. Even though I was having to sit on a dining chair, it felt amazing. I'm gonna try and pull forward a little bit so I can straighten up. There was a second of worry as it struggled with power and seemed to be leaking diesel everywhere. It's the weirdest feeling with this, with the seat slipping. Although I've had my share of bad luck with the bus, with it being broken onto and the ignition keys being stolen, it felt like things were finally going my way. I was able to smoothly reverse the bus onto our land and park up in position, and it was looking good. Woo! Right, I kind of want to see what that's looking like. What do we think? This is pretty good. I mean, I could straighten up a little bit. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Did you see how much it struggled going uphill though and oh, yeah. the, the black smoke that was kicking out? Yeah. That's why I was worried to even move it. Yeah, look at the, the diesel leaking, man. Yeah, there's a major engine problem that would probably cost thousands to fix, but obviously, what's the point? I don't need to. This will be the second to last move. That was where the bus was. It's pretty amazing. Sears just pointed out that this is a jackfruit tree. Yeah, right on your lot. Look, there's a baby jackfruit right here. Oh, no way. I did not know we had jackfruit on our lot. It's amazing. To be fair, this is probably just a small sapling when we were last here. Yeah. At this point, my dad kindly offered to fly out to Costa Rica, bringing some new power tools to replace the ones I'd had stolen and be available to help me with the enormous amount of work we had to do. Me and my dad have come down to the bus just to start vibing out what we need to set up, where we're gonna have a workstation, where we need to empty stuff out of the bus once we start ripping things out, how best to lay out the tools, all of that kind of stuff. Maybe if we can create a shade to work in. And then also something I want to do today is start strimming some of the land where we want to move the bus to because by the end of our stay here we want to have a solid plan in place and maybe even submitted with an architecture or with the design committee to start building later in the year so this is the area that we're wanting to move the bus to over the next few vlogs we'll start showing you plans and maybe i can build a little 3d model or we can do some diagrams or whatever but I think this is hopefully will be up there and then our main house will be in that corner and this will be more of an open space and maybe in the bottom corner we'll have like a little workshop garage and then potentially another little small house over in the other corner so corners of the land are going to be where most of the buildings are it's not perfect but it it creates a bit of shade for us to shelter from the sun if we set up a little workbench here there should be enough space here to be doing cutting and stuff in the heat of the day my dad is having a go at strimming and we're going to strim back this area to kind of have a look because this is probably where we want to put the bus and build our little shelter. Are you having a, are you having a fun time with the strimmer, Dad? Great time with the strimmer. I feel like a proper man. <laughs> I think you've got a, uh, a mask, but... Uh... I have got a full face mask if it feels a bit sketchy. Yeah. You good? Just watching out for wildlife. Yeah. making good progress. Something that's very interesting, and this is why I wanted to do this so we could get a better look, because from down here, it just kind of looked like a slope of shrubbery, but it actually isn't. There's a pretty severe drop where there's a couple of big boulders here. Oh, very unstable. 
See this huge boulder here? This is probably, from where I'm standing, a six foot or five foot boulder. This is almost, it's naturally got that, that height already. Probably that's where we want the bus up there, where that kind of bush is. And then probably secure this wall a bit more and then build the, the deck of the building or the, the flooring of where we're gonna be walking out into the kitchen and stuff. Could be on stilts. 